How do you call someone living in France? Don't worry, this is not the start of some bad joke. Because for the longest time, the answer was not even obvious. When the French writer Maupassant traveled through the French region of Lower Brittany in 1882, he was hardly meeting compatriots. He said that, For often during a whole week, while roaming through the villages, one does not meet a single person who knows a word of French. Up until well into the 19th century, rural France was made up of all sorts of people, but not many considered themselves French, let alone Frenchmen or Frenchwomen. So how did that change? This is a question that the Romanian-American scholar Eugene Weber grappled with. In 1976, he wrote his classic, Turning Peasants into Frenchmen. He stated that in the 1800s, most of France consisted of isolated and impoverished peasant communities. Urban-based French culture, French language, and national consciousness had made few inroads. He shows us how in 1851, 75% of French citizens were rural. In 1860, one in five citizens did not speak French, but some other language, like Basque, Breton, Catalan, or Flemish. And even in 1906, only one in four draftees for the French military service could explain why July 14th when the French Revolution is commemorated, was a national holiday. Instead of a national consciousness, many peasants had a highly local identity. They practiced farming just to survive and were not part of the larger market economy. Culture was oral, as most were illiterate. Instead of through any media, stories were told at local markets, fairs or during a so-called veille an evening where the villagers gather at one house to save fuel and have a convivial evening of storytelling. This is how it was for centuries, and how it would be forever, if modernity hadn't come knocking at France's farmers' doors. From 1870 onwards, as Weber writes, big changes come sweeping over France. He identifies three major developments that Frenchify the countryside. First, the rail network expanded greatly, quadrupled between 1860 and 1900, and regional roads were improved. Furthermore, education was made free and compulsory, with a centralized curriculum and centrally trained teachers. They taught the French language and introduced French geography and French history. French urban values were taught, and thus a shared experience for all children in France was created. This process that began in schools was continued in the army, Forced conscription prolonged the shared experience. It plunged peasants into an environment full of forced subordination to the nation. It also facilitated emigration and contact. Even more for the soldiers who were illiterate, they had to serve for one more year. A report from the Breton town of Rennes spoke highly of the military service. The young Bretons who don't know how to read, write or speak French when they get to their units are promptly civilized lose the prejudice of their pay, abandon native suspicions and backwards opinions. And when they return to the village, they are sufficiently Frenchified to Frenchify their friends by their influence. And this is how the old way of life was forced from the heads of peasants of 19th century France. Now they know too that they are Frenchmen and Frenchwomen. More than just a state, France becomes a nation a unity with the endearing nickname L'Hexagon. It is important to note that Eugene Weber is also criticized. His narrative is emblematic of a particular school of thought in the study of nationalism, that of modernism. Modernist thinkers see the development of a nation as an inevitability as states centralize themselves to survive in modern times. Like Weber described, through coercion the state forces unity. But like the modernist theories themselves, Weber is not undisputed. Many authors throughout the years insist that he puts too much emphasis on the role of the central state. They claim that the process of national consciousness has to be understood through complex negotiation between different levels. Peasants themselves have a role to play when it comes to accepting or rejecting an entity. Whatever the truth, this classic work of Weber offers us a glimpse into the complex work of nation building and how the identification of a people is manipulated by showing how modern France 
rests on not-so-French peasants.